Hello everybody. Is the sound working well? Hello everybody. Thank you for joining us for Mass and uh, this week we begin the first Sunday of Advent and uh, Advent the first Sunday of Lent and uh, as we begin the Lenten season I'm so glad that you are able to uh, to join with us to pray with us and uh, and to, so that we can support one another in our in our Lenten journey so let's begin Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and all the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come, of the covenant between me and you, and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings, so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. 
Guide me in your spirit and truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, and he teaches the humble his way. Your ways, O Lord, are, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it he also went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah, during the building of the, of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through the water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips and proclaim his gospel worthily and well. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we are in the season of Lent, of course, uh, this past uh, Wednesday was Ash Wednesday when, uh, when everything started for, uh, for our Lenten season. And like everything over the past year, Ash Wednesday, we knew, was going to be weird. And uh, it, so much so that we actually got some instruction that, that it originated in the, in, at the Vatican, and it was how to do ashes this year. Uh, everyone kind of agreed that it would probably be a bad idea for me to use the same thumb on everybody's forehead in the uh, in the parish during a pandemic. So th there's a there's a tradition in the church. There's actually two ways in which ashes were normally uh, given, and a lot of times it depends on what country you're in, what the custom is. But both customs go way back. Uh, the one is the one that we're probably most familiar with in the United States, which is the ashes are, are put in the sign of a cross on our forehead. But in other countries, and you know, notably in Italy and most especially in Rome, but there's many other places too, the custom is to take some, a little bit of ashes and sprinkle them on the top of our heads. And I'd actually have seen this done um, and, and, and I was aware that there was something that was done, you know, all over. So when this instruction came out, I didn't really think much of it. I thought, okay, so we do sprinkling this year. Turns out 
sprinkling ashes on top of people's heads was a very unpopular option in, in our parish. When I brought it up to our pastoral council meeting, it went over like a brick. Uh, and it was like, no, 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 we're not, we want the cross on our forehead. And uh, for, the, for our diocese instruction, even though the Roman one said sprinkling, the diocese had a little thing on here that said, if, if people insist on the crosses, then you can do it, but you have to use a cotton ball because you can't use your thumb. So I was like, well, all right. But I really thought the cotton balls were going to be a huge mess. I wanted to do sprinkling. And then somebody on our parish council said, why don't you use Q-tips? Well, to be honest with you, I thought that was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And Q-tips was not in my list of things that we could use. And I, I didn't want to write down to the diocese a letter asking about Q-tips. Because I thought, first of all, number one, they're going to laugh me out of the diocese if I'm writing a letter about Q-tips. Or secondly, and even worse, they might take it like overly seriously and make like a big Q-tips document. And I didn't want either one. But in either case, you know, there's only so many times that you're going to get a battle. And I figure this is the one and only time that we're going to have to do ashes this way anyway. Why make a fight about it? Q-tips it is. So I went out and I bought 2,000 Q-tips. And Deacon Ralph uh, and his wife Deb, they, they spent a good week, week and a half, practicing the right mixture of ashes and Q-tips and all of that. So how do, how do we make them work? And I have to say, Q-tips worked really well. I was wrong, and I stand corrected. Once we got that little mixture right with the ashes so it wasn't too dry and all of that, and I have to say, those Q-tip crosses were some of the nicest crosses I've ever made with ashes. I mean, they were good. They, they, they were right. They looked proportionate. They weren't like, you know, half cockeyed on there, which I sometimes do, and there were no smudges. These were beautiful crosses. My penmanship is much better with a Q-tip than it is using the thumb. And I couldn't believe how wrong I was. Now I have to tell the pastoral council, you were right, I was wrong, I stand corrected. That, I think, is a great way to begin Lent by standing corrected. Because during the season of Lent, I think for each one of us, we have to find a way to stand corrected before our Lord. And, you know, there, there are so many things that any one of us can bring before our Lord and say, help me, help me, help me to turn closer to you. Help me to turn away from the things that, that are weighing down upon me. Most of all, help me to turn away from sin. And, you know, sometimes in this pandemic, um, it, it can go two ways for us. I know for me, at least. You know, in one way, sometimes this pandemic has been one gigantic long Lent the whole year because it's been making us focus. We've, we've suffered. We've offered up. We, we, we've been impinged upon. But we've also, like Len is supposed to do, when all of these things happen, it helps us to focus on what's really important. And how many times during this past year have we focused on things that are more important than maybe what would have been on our agenda otherwise? That's great. But then, and I know for myself at least, there have been other times when the pandemic has given me, given me a great excuse to not look very deeply inside. Because I say, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm suffering enough with all the things that are around me. I don't have to look too deeply inside to see what else needs to be corrected. And in that case, maybe I've been a little bit lazy. Maybe I've been a little bit lax. And this season of Lent then calls us to say, okay, what needs to be looked at? And Jesus shows us the way. In today's gospel, 
It, it says the Spirit drives the Lord out. This is Mark's gospel. It drives the Lord out into the desert. And Mark doesn't give us very much about all the temptations, but we see that in the other gospels, how Jesus was tempted. But Mark does give us one really interesting tidbit. It says Jesus was among the wild beast and the angels ministered to him. He was right in the middle between all of the things that were threatening, that were wild, that were untamed of this world and the things of heaven. And this Lent, this pandemic Lent that we're entering into again, we're kind of that way too. We're in the middle between things that are wild and untamed and threatening to us, and also things that have been purifying and grace-filled and of heaven. And there we are in the middle. But as we go through this Lent, I think it helps us to remember that Jesus is right there in the middle with us. And as we negotiate our way uh, between things that are of heaven that we seek out and we ask the Lord to, to, to bring us even closer. And as we try to distance ourselves from those things which keep us from God and seek protection from those things that threaten us, this Lenten season is a great time for us to remember that Jesus is with us, Jesus calls us closer to him, and Jesus provides his grace so that we can have a great Lent, separating ourselves from that which keeps us from God and coming closer to our Lord. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now to the Lord of compassion and mercy, let us offer our prayers. And once again, if you have anything that, that you would like us to pray for, um, and, and you want to mention those things, I, uh, I always check the comments afterwards. and. Uh, I add all of your intentions to my own. So by all means, add those things. And uh, my own thing I would like us to, to pray for is um, a, a little boy, uh, his name is James. Uh, he's only four years old. Um, he's in Children's Hospital with a, um, a, a massive uh, infection uh, that's, that's attacking different parts of his, uh, of his body. And they're, um, they're trying to get on top of that. And, I know his family would appreciate your prayers for James. That these 40 days of Lent may be a desert experience for each of us to rediscover the ways of God, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that those who govern nations and human destinies may be committed to the justice and mercy of God, working unceasingly for the alleviation of hunger and misery in the world, and this weekend most especially for those in Texas who have been suffering terribly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that our compassionate Father in heaven will watch over those who have been displaced from their homes by disaster, persecution, or financial hardship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick and suffering. We pray for those who are uh, most especially suffering because of the pandemic. And we also pray for those who have been trying to get uh, signed up for vaccination appointments and have been frustrated uh, in trying to do so, that they will be helped by all those who are able to do so. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who have died, that those who will return to God during this Lenten season may experience the eternal life of the victorious Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally now, let us offer our own prayers in the silence of our heart or through the comments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear the prayers we offer to you, O Lord, during these holy days of Lent. May we dedicate ourselves to the work of making these prayers a reality. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings for, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery we might pass over to that last 
an eternal Paschal feast. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This, of course, is the time uh, at Mass when Catholics are able to receive Jesus body, blood, soul, and divinity, his real presence in the Eucharist. And I know that for so many who are unable to come out for Mass and unable to, to be present uh, and to receive our Lord in the sacrament, this is the hardest part. And, um, and the Church understands that, and our Lord understands that too. So what, what, what the Church says that, that we should do right now is for those of us who, who can't receive Jesus, um, in the Eucharist ourselves, that, that we pray right now, expressing our desire for Jesus to, uh, to be part of us, to come to, come to us. And we believe that, that, that our prayer of desire for the Eucharist is united to the desire that Jesus has to, to be with us, to be part of our lives. And then in a very special way, when we pray right now, we believe that Jesus does come to us in what we call spiritual communion and takes up a presence in our, in our hearts and in our souls. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. And let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thanks so much for, uh, for praying with us and uh, for participating in this Mass. Um, uh, I'll see you next week as we continue our Lenten journey.